Hey guys and girls, fabricators, DIYers, and hot rodders and everything in between, uh, welcome back for another uh, episode uh, or update on the truck. I'm finally getting around to building the turbo kit on the truck and I'm, I'm kind of running behind on the video here. I, I've completely forgot about starting the camera. Uh, but in any event, right now what you're looking at is I'm, I've adapted a, uh, a tubing notcher that you would normally use on roll cage tubing and whatnot to um, hole saw the holes in the log manifold for the passenger side of the uh, engine where the turbo is going to mount. Now I've already, I'm already two thirds of the way through the third hole and I'm getting ready to cut the fourth one. The fourth one is actually just going to be part of it because it's going to have the bend in the pipe that goes up to the turbo. So part of that's going to get done by hand. Um, so in any event, uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish this notch. Uh, I'll relocate it and go to the, the last notch and or the last cutout for the primary tube. And then I'll kind of give you a close-up of how I modify the tubing notcher so uh, you could do this just the same. Uh, I think this tubing notcher is made for up to like one and three quarter tubing or something and this is two and a half. So anyways, uh, here we go. I'm going to cut this real quick and uh, I'll give you a close-up. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the camera now and give you a close up of what the what the setup looks like, and I'm gonna take it apart so you can see what I did to the notcher to make it work. Okay, as you can see, I just have a regular old hose clamp holding it down there, and and I welded some brackets on a piece of angle iron, <clears throat> and I added studs to the back to put it all together with. So now I'm gonna take it apart so you can see the rest of it. Okay, there it is. Super, super simple. Just a couple pieces of angle iron, a hose clamp to hold the tubing down, and it's and the angle iron is welded in a manner that it is spaced out from the center of the angle iron, from the center of the angle iron to the face of the notcher is half the distance, is half the diameter of the tubing. So in this case, from the surface to the center is an inch and a quarter because we're on two and a half inch tubing. Um, as you can see, those brackets are real simple. Just a couple pieces of the uh, angle iron welded to the side of the other one. The tube is held down with a hose clamp, and that's about it. Okay, I've got a portion of the log manifold completed. Um, I'm putting on the, the collector flange now where the other header comes underneath the transmission and connects to it. So I'm going to finish welding that out real quick. And then we're going to move on to the next part where we connect it to the header flange itself. So we'll go ahead and get that started right now. Okay, we got the inside of it welded up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and I'm going to weld a small section in between each bolt. Uh, so that way, in case, uh, so that way when we dress it off on the belt sander, in case there's any thin spots or anything like that, it'll still be welded on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over and do that real quick. And we're only going to weld an inch or inch and a half or so between the bolts. Alright, flange welded up complete. The one other thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and weld the nuts to the top side of that flange because it's probably going to be pretty hard to get to once it's in the truck. So we don't want to have to jack around and trying to hold a wrench up there while you're putting the uh, 
the bolt in from the bottom side and having sealer all over it and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I have the nuts and bolts put in place so I can weld them on the back side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. There's another part of it done. So now it's cooled off, I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart and uh, we're gonna start working on the other side of it. The flange is welded on the inside and we've welded it in three places on the outside as well. So we're gonna take it over to the belt sander and we're gonna dress the flange off flat so that'll be the, that part will be complete. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing, we're gonna start fitting it on the truck and make the pipe where it bends upwards towards the turbine inlet on the turbo. So, uh, well, check it out. And also, uh, I just wanted to illustrate what you do here uh, when you weld these flanges on the inside like this and then a little bit on the outside. Uh, you just dress it up on the belt center. If you get a close-up look at that there, it came out nice and flat, um, perfectly fine for what we're doing with it. And um, all it's going to take is some ultra copper sealer on that flange and that thing's going to seal up nice. Okay, so now we are going to start fitting the last primary and the up pipe where it goes up into the turbine inlet on the turbo. Okay, this particular piece of tubing is going to be the one that bends off of the log manifold in the front up towards the turbo. So all we're going to do here uh, and this is the part that a lot of people seem to struggle with and it's really not that hard. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to flatten this pipe out in the vise uh, further than I need it to go in order to fit inside the turbine flange. And it's just going to look like hell for a few minutes until you see what we're doing with it. Now remember, you want to take it past the point in which it fits in that pipe. Okay. So that looks terrible, doesn't it? And we want it to fit the pipe nice and loose, just like that. Okay, so check it out. We got the pipes lightly clamped in the vise where it sticks up above the surface of the vise about 3 8 of an inch. Now, we've taken the turbine flange and we've just set it on top of the vise. And as you can see, it's loose, okay, because it fits sloppy. So what we want to do is we're going to take that turbine flange and we want to make sure and orient the flange in the direction that we want it to be because we're getting ready to weld this thing. In my case, this particular turbine flange is going to be lined up straight with the pipe this way and straight with the pipe this way. So I'm going to look down on top of it and get it lined up pretty good. Now I'm going to grab the camera and I'm going to look down on top of this thing and show you what it looks like right now. Okay, as you can see, it does not fit very good at all. But we're not going to weld it like that. All we're going to do right now is we're going to tack this thing in place and we're going to tack it kind of heavy um, because we are going to beat on it with a hammer a little bit. Okay, as you can see, I've tacked it right here in this one spot. So now I'm going to start fitting this tube. <clears throat> And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to take all these spots that are the closest. These are going to be easiest to bend. I will hammer these out to these edges and tack them in place just the same. Now the outside of this bend is going to be the hardest to form. So we, when we tack these outside edges, or when we tack these outer edges, we want to tack them pretty heavy because when we start forming this, uh, it's going to tend to want to break these tack welds loose. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so be sure to check the orientation of the pipe and the flange this way after you hit it with the hammer every single time uh, because the smallest movement uh, will throw your alignment off on your, your setup as you get it fitted to the vehicle. Um, now, once you get it tacked in, in probably three places, then that, that's not as much of a problem anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and tack this in the closest places. And this one's actually close enough where I can clamp it and make it even better. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Now, if you, I don't know if you can see that in the video or not, but whenever I clamp that thing down on this side, it moved quite a bit. So then I put it back by putting a clamp on the other side. So we'll go ahead and tack those in place and see if it stays where we want it.
Now we're gonna check the orientation in the vehicle. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we're, uh, I think we're clear to go ahead and start forming it the rest of the way. And uh, then we'll go ahead and weld it up. Okay, so in order to form the pipe to the inside of the flange, I use three tools. I use a dull punch, a dull chisel, and a hammer. So if you're worried about making the part look good, the part that you need to be conscious of is when you start hammering on the tubing from the inside, you don't want the edge of the chisel or the edge of the punch to go below the surface of the flange because if you do, it's going to put dents in the pipe from the inside out and you will be able to see those on the outside. So all we're going to do fit these edges up. And oh, and also, one other thing I forgot to mention, the reason why we use a dull chisel and a dull punch is so that we don't puncture the pipe from the inside because it's pretty easy to do. Sometimes you have to actually take the part out of the vise. So far, so good. Um, let me see if I can get that focused in there. Hey, you see that other end's turning out real nice. And at this point, I wouldn't be afraid to go ahead and weld um, at least 60% of the way around that part right there. Uh, so as you can see uh, in the picture, that would be from the lowest tack welds on the left and the right side all the way around. Okay, so now we've welded that part up. As you can see right there, I'll give you a little close-up of it. Let's weld it up uh, about two-thirds of the way around, maybe three-quarters, five-eighths, I don't know, whatever. Um, it's welded up, and now the reason why you do that is because you got to be pretty mean to it with the hammer to form this next part. So now let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so what you'll find is as you form this, you get it a little close on one side and then you start hammering around on the other side and it pulls one side back over to you. So when you get an edge close uh, within the thickness of your welding rod, you want to go ahead and weld that in place too. Okay, so as you can see right there, uh, as you can see right there, the lower left corner is getting pretty close. So I'm going to tap it in place, weld it right there where it is, and then finish forming the other side. Okay, we welded the third side up. Now we're going to fit the fourth corner and then that'll be it. Okay, I think we're going to call it quits on this video right now. The manifold is in the 50 to 60% range of being done. Um, so the next video we're going to cover finishing up the manifold which is going to be putting the fourth primary on place and putting the turbine inlet flange on and also the header flange on. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, so once again, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you in the next videos.